Okay, listen, I am a side dish girl. I want like three or four on my plate. You'll have to tell me down below in the comments if you are the same way. So today I thought we could make three side dish recipes. These are going to be full of flavor and so delicious. So let's go ahead and get started on this first one. So the first thing that we are making is a ramen noodle salad. I don't know if I've ever had one of these, but my mom is here and she was like, Jess, this is my favorite thing. So she's so excited about it. Um, so of course you'll need like some ramen noodles. I have kind of most of the ingredients out here. Sesame seeds, some sliced almonds. We're gonna start um, by roasting these. And then you're gonna need some coleslaw. The recipe also calls for a bag of like broccoli slaw. I honestly could not find it. I went to two grocery stores. So I just got one of these little chopped kits that has broccoli and all kinds of stuff in there. And I thought, well, why not? And then um, soy sauce, rice vinegar, we're gonna need a few other things, but first things first, I'm gonna get my sliced almonds on my sheet pan and we are going to bake these at like 300 for just like eight minutes until you can kind of like smell the toastiness of these almonds. Okay, so while those are in the oven, I'm gonna go ahead and make our dressing. By the way, if you hear my air fryer back there, we're cooking some chicken tonight. But for the dressing, we're gonna add about half of a cup of olive oil. And y'all know me, I'm gonna totally eyeball it. I'd say that's probably good. Fourth a cup of rice vinegar. I love the flavor of rice vinegar, by the way. And then we're gonna add three tablespoons of soy sauce. One, two, three. Another splash just because. <laughs> and then we're gonna do half a cup of sugar and stir this until that sugar dissolves. So the almonds are done and let me just tell you, a toasted almond tastes so good. And then I just took one and dipped it in our sauce. Friends, this flavor combo is going to be out of this world. This sauce is delicious and i put a little less sugar than what it called for just because i don't want like too much sweetness and too much sugar in there i'd rather it be like a little bit more vinegar based so anyway it's so delicious okay so now to our bowl we're just gonna add both of our slaw mixtures and then we you know what this bowl is not big enough hang on <laughs> why does this always happen to me i'm telling y'all i use the wrong size bowl all the time Okay, slaw mixture is in there. And I know my broccoli slaw mixture has like all kinds of other things in, in it, but I don't think, you know, it's gonna hurt anything. So I'm dumping it all in. I'm just gonna kind of toss these two um, like lettuces or slaws together. This is already looking so pretty. So now that we have our like slaw mixtures in our bowl, we're gonna add our ramen. But before you open your ramen noodles, go ahead and like break it up into tiny little like half inch pieces and then also save the flavor packet in there. And then just toss it right in and if you have some bigger pieces left, you can kind of break them up as you see them. I'm gonna do two packages of ramen because I love the crunch. I love the crunch too. Yeah, that's the best part. This is gonna be right up my alley actually. Oh, I just cannot wait. I tasted that little dressing and it's like, oh, it's out of this world. Is it dressing homemade? It's homemade. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now to your mixture, you can add in your almonds. You do want them to kind of cool off before you add them. So give them a few minutes to kind of cool once you bring them out of the oven. You toasted those? I toasted them. Hmm. Like toasted almonds, the flavor. Now to this, you're also gonna add in some sesame seeds. You think that's good? I, I didn't see how many were going in there to start. Well, but I didn't measure it, but I feel like it's a good amount. <laughs> it probably is. It's like good. Hey, we can always add some to the topping right. after the fact. Yes. Now for this step, let me tell you what I'm gonna do. It says to take your um, actual seasoning packet that comes in your ramen noodles Ooh. and put it in your dressing. Yeah. I don't think I'm gonna add both. I think I'm just gonna add just do one. one. Cause yeah, I don't want it to be too one. salty. Mm -hmm. And I might even just do like half a packet. Oh, I'll just put the whole thing in there. Okay, we'll do the whole thing. <laughs> but just one, just one. Yeah, I don't want to add both of them. Okay, give oh. this a good stir again. Oh, by the way, 
The recipe that I'm going off of, they did say that they like the beef ramen noodle flavor the best. So try and find that one. For sure. I would I would definitely go with the beef over yeah. like chicken. Definitely not shrimp. Well, they have the soy sauce one now that I think would be good too. Oh. <laughs> you can choose what you want, but I say beef or soy sauce. Yeah, go beef. I think she said one other one, but I can't remember what it was, but I'll leave their recipe down below for y'all. Now this is our last step. All we have to do is just pour this dressing over top of our slaw, give it a good toss, and then you're gonna refrigerate this for like three hours minimum up to overnight. We're gonna do hours overnight. So in the morning mm -hmm. or tomorrow for lunch, I guess. Yeah. This is gonna have so much flavor incorporated in there. Yeah, I can't wait to. Me uh, too. That those ramen noodles are gonna just transform into something magical. Oh, they're gonna be magical. Yes. Okay, it is taste test time. <laughs> I just took a bite, so I'm excited for you to tell me what you think and then I'm gonna give you my thought. Yeah, I haven't tried this yet, but this is a medley of so many different things that I love. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm surprised at how crunchy this still is. I love the crunch. The almond and the ramen. I think Bunky thought that, like the ramen noodles were gonna like take on that um, dressing and kind of be soft. I thought they were gonna absorb a little bit more. But I guess it's good that they're not, you know, like mushy, right? I like that it still gives it like such a good crunch with the almond. Like even if you just had this with some, you know, protein, like pretty much anything like that. Mm -hmm. Just that and this together would be I think like if a whole you meal. marinated like some teriyaki chicken, yeah. grilled it, and then had that as a side. Or put in the air fryer. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. So I love the flavors of this because y'all know like that's really like my flavor profile that I'm obsessed with. I almost would take a little bit of sesame oil and drizzle it on top just to like even more intensify that flavor because I feel like that would take it over the top. Do you think, B? Mm-hmm. Like I feel like it would give it the best. And maybe I should have put two pa the two packs of. I think that would have been actually good, yeah. So I think we were a little fearful of using both packets of the, the seasoning. But I think you should have. Yeah, it, it wouldn't have hurt anything. Like, it, it wouldn't have been too strong. Hang on. I don't want y'all to think that, like, this doesn't have any flavor because it's, like, crazy, so good. But it's, like, very mild. So it still has all of those flavors that you can taste in it. But they're not, like, overpowering, which I really like. But we feel like it could take on even more flavor. So if we would have used a second packet, it would have been probably what it needed. I should have just follow the recipe. It, it would have added that umami. Yeah, or <laughs> like I'm saying, a little like drizzle of sesame oil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so good. But it's so light, so refreshing, crunchy. Like it's just really, really good. And it's an easy, like you can put this together in no time. Okay, this is the ultimate taste <laughs> tester, okay? <laughs> I love Asian salad. I think it was a good summer salad. That's what I was saying. It's very light and refreshing. Yeah, it is. Like, I could see eating a bowl of this every couple days, just like having the fridge. And I think the longer it sits, the better it gets. I told Monkey, I think it'll be so good with like some um, grilled turkey chicken tenderloins mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. But do you feel like the flavor could be even more intense? Like it's very mild. It is mild. Like I feel like it could have like that extra packet of the ramen seasoning. I don't know. I thought more dressing because like I love. I know we had a little bit of that left and I just put it on my chicken. It was so good and flavorful. Yeah. Like I could even put more of the dressing. Like a second coating. Oh, of the I like that idea better. Cause yeah. I feel like the packet of whatever's in the ramen, like that's probably pretty salty and stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. But to me, if I had more like rice wine vinegar, soy sauce. Yes, yeah. Like I would want to double the, for this amount. Cause yeah. two bags, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just to double the dressing. Double the dressing. Okay, so for this next recipe, we're gonna make something a little bit more warm and hearty. We're gonna make creamy comfort potatoes. Creamy comfort, <laughs> that's hard to say. Creamy comfort potatoes. Say that fast three times, okay? Kind of like all gratin potatoes, but these are like over the top because they have like diced ham in there. They're gonna be so good. And so for the ham, I'm gonna be using this Smithfield Anytime Diced Ham. We love this one, it's so good. And I wanna say the biggest thank you ever to Smithfield for sponsoring today's video. I'm so excited to get to partner with them again. You guys know we love their products so much. We always get their bacon, their ham, sausage, all kinds of things. So anyway, let me show you how we're gonna make these potatoes. Mom's actually gonna be 
dicing these up. I'd rather her use the mandolin than Bunky because we know what happens when Bunky uses the mandolin. So mom's gonna go ahead and slice these pretty thin because we're gonna be layering this dish. So we told them we're gonna give mom the job of using the mandolin because you're not allowed to touch it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look, we better, she better be careful. I know. Those, those things are slippery. They'll get you, won't they, Bunky? <laughs> they <will. laughs> Yeah. The question is, do you know how to use this thing? I know how to I, use it, but are, I just don't have the right I'm, attachment I'm, in there. I'm losing confidence quickly. <laughs> oh, you got the fancy when it stands. Yes. <laughs> oh, the attachments That's not are... the right blade, though. Oh, we need it sliced. Oh, you did, I don't think you got the... We have uh, the blades in other... Yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. What happened? I thought I was doing good. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Mom had one outside of the bowl. Now be careful the closer that thing gets down. You're making me nervous. There is a guard you can use. You're making me really nervous, Mom. <laughs> Why don't we use this? I usually do most of the potatoes like till about this size, then I use the guard. Okay, so okay. Just as long as you productive. promise to be smart with this. Mm. While mom finishes the potatoes, I'm gonna go ahead and get some butter melting. And I know y'all won't believe this, but we're gonna add some onions in here because I think it's really gonna take the dish up a notch, and mom and Bunky will love that. Mm -hmm. And there's the oven right on time. So as soon as this melts, I'll add our onions and we'll saute those until they're like nice and soft. So the recipe says to actually use one whole onion, but of course I only used a little bit and I left it in kind of larger chunks so that I can pick around the onions. But of course, you know, if you're making this for your family and you love onions, add them all in there and just dice them up. Okay, so now that we've got these like nice and tender, I'm gonna add in some flour because we're basically like making a little roux and then kind of like a cream sauce. So I'm gonna sprinkle this in and start stirring and you want all of this flour to kind of absorb that butter and then we'll add in some heavy cream and some milk so very gently and slowly I'm going to start adding in my milk and kind of like whisking as I go and then also our heavy cream Now we're gonna season this with a little bit of salt and pepper and the recipe doesn't call for this but I feel like some smoked paprika would be really good. So I'm gonna add just a pinch of that in here as well. Okay, whisk this together. If you have like some parsley or any like fresh herbs you wanna add in, you totally can do that now too. And then we're just gonna let this thicken and kind of like stir it constantly. Mom's over here hey, making fun of me. <laughs> Listen, I learned from you, okay? Just throw in the cornstarch, it'll be done like that. You think I didn't add in enough flour? Well, I didn't see it when you first started. <laughs> so our sauce thickened up perfectly. It didn't take any time at all. It looks gorgeous. And then as far as cheese goes, I'm gonna do a mixture of cheddar cheese and then mozzarella. And I have my nine by 13 here and I went ahead and like greased it pretty well. And then we have our beautifully sliced potatoes that mom did and our Smithfield Anytime diced ham. So basically I'm gonna start with potatoes, sprinkle on our ham, layer on some cheese in our sauce, and then we'll just repeat this process um, over and over until we have all the potatoes, ham, sauce complete, and then we'll pop this in the oven. Did you know that Smithfield is the leading provider of premium pork products, offering the most important part of any meal, and that is high quality meat? I love that I can use Smithfield products no matter what time of day or what meal I'm cooking. This Smithfield Anytime Diced Ham is going to be the perfect touch to these potatoes, but they could also be used in like a fresh ham salad or a breakfast omelet, quiche, or casserole. The possibilities are endless, and I love how convenient the package of diced ham is it takes a little bit of that prep work off my plate and Smithfield takes their meat duties very seriously which is why they have been around for over 85 years from all-star appetizers and bacon love and breakfast to casual weeknight dinners and family feasts Smithfield adds flavor to every single meal and they offer bacon in a wide variety of flavors cuts and sizes breakfast sausage that are in patties links and rolls and mom was actually just saying that she wished that we 
had some sausage to dip into this like gravy mixture that we made for the potatoes. That would have been so good. And then of course their anytime favorites, which include the ham steaks and diced and cubed ham. And you can find Smithfield products at most of your local grocery stores. So be sure to pick up some of this anytime diced ham so you can make these amazing potatoes for your family. Okay, so I added a little bit of the ham and cheese to the top just for like presentation so that you kind of know what's in there. I'm gonna cover this with foil and we're gonna bake it for one hour covered at 350. And then we'll take our tin foil off and cook it for about 20 more minutes minutes and this will be done. <laughs> Mom thinks it's not gonna take an hour. No. I would take it out after about 40 minutes because you're only needing to soften the potatoes basically. Right because everything else is cooked and she's saying basically yeah. she sliced potatoes so thin she feels like this is only gonna take not an hour so We'll take it out at 40 minutes and check it, okay? <laughs> it's going in the oven. So my mom actually just ran to the grocery store, so she doesn't even get to enjoy. Well, she might be back by the time this is like actually done, but it's been in there for like 45 minutes, so B's gonna take it out and we'll give it a little look-see. It does have to cook for about 20 minutes with the full off. Ah, well it sounds divine. It sounds and smells. <laughs> I can like actually smell the onion and I always say like, I like the smell of cooked onion, you know? Yeah, this smells really it good. It really does. So pull the foil off. Uh-huh. The big reveal. Got some steam in there. Yeah, it's gonna be hot. Ah, boom. Wow. Oh my goodness gracious, Bunky. Wow. Okay, so this is like bubbling away. Looks amazing. I'm gonna give like a little fork test just because I want to see if the potatoes are tender. Oh, they actually kind of are, but they definitely still need a little while. Yeah, I can kind of tell with the the resistance you're experiencing there on the push. Yeah, so they need you know to still cook. So we'll pop it back in for 20 minutes, uncovered. My mouth's watering. <laughs> see what we got going on after that, but it's just looking so good. This topping looks, I mean, oh I my know. gosh. I feel like this could honestly be like almost a meal. Oh, wow. What? This just looks so good. <laughs> Ooh-wee! I'm telling you what, I feel like this is some potatoes you're gonna love. <laughs> I know, I was just thinking about that. You know, I'm not the... I'm not the biggest fan of potatoes, but in this preparation, I'm thinking I am gonna be a fan. I can see a little onion. Are your eyes watering because it's so hot? Oh, it's a little warm. <laughs> They're also watering. Those are tears of joy. Really? <laughs> yeah, that's good. Oh, man. I'm gonna get another little. I feel like this is the here. ultimate like comfort food. I think how you said like this could be. You could almost consider this a meal in itself. Yeah. Because, you know, you got the little, like the little bits of ham in there. Mm -hmm. So you kind of, you really feel like you're eating something a little bit more substantial, you know? Yeah. And they add a lot of flavor to this. Yeah. But then the onion in there, and then the nice. You got a good like little crust the, on there. That edge on this is like, just ridiculously good. You gotta see this, look at, look at this edge, like look. Wow. Oh my gosh, Bunky. It's like um, elevated potatoes au gratin, right? Accurate. Okay. Here's my thing. Clearly the onions give it so much flavor. Like, I can kind of taste them. So in my case, if I just like a little bit of onion powder and like the roux mixture, I would probably sit down with that casserole dish in my lap and a fork and I'd eat the entire thing. Like. The potatoes are so tender, they just almost like melt in your mouth. And I love what mm -hmm. Bunky's saying, the ham does give it like a different texture and it's the best thing. I cannot explain it, but it's like yeah. a match made in heaven. You know, I, I <sighs> dare say that this is better than macaroni and cheese. I'm not kidding. I think it might be. <laughs> I really, I do. I think it, I think I would rather, almost rather have this than macaroni and cheese. It's like ridiculously good I'm I'm like I don't even know how to explain it to you but it's like one of the best things I feel like I've ever eaten yeah did you put some cracked pepper parmesan on no there? I did surprisingly <laughs> but yeah. that would be so good that would be that would be I think oh. all I used to season it was salt pepper smoked paprika it's insane yeah. it is so good y'all 
make this recipe. For sure. Like, wow. It's it's incredible. <laughs> uh, mm, right? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Wow. Is that not insane? I'm, I'm glad we made a lot. Yeah, that was so good. <laughs> Now for this third recipe, we are making a southern fried cabbage with bacon and onion. I feel like I'm basically cooking for my mom and Bunky today because these are like so their kind of recipes. Although I love any type of cabbage, like that is one of my favorite things. So minus the onion, this would be delicious in my book, but I feel like y'all are going to love this one, mom. Oh, you yes. cannot wait. It's, it's right up my alley. Yeah. So to get started, we're gonna go ahead and fry up some bacon, and then we will like remove most of the grease, but you wanna leave like two tablespoons in there because we're gonna saute the onion in the bacon grease. Mm. Our bacon is cooked, it looks amazing. And then I took out most of the um, bacon grease and then reserved just a little bit. I'll go ahead and add my onion. So once this onion cooks down and gets nice and translucent, we're gonna go ahead and add this cabbage to our pan. And I just went ahead and cut some of it up. I'll probably have to cut a little bit more, but you just wanna kind of give it a rough chop. If you all saw our dips video, you know that like smoked um, Mexican street corn dip that we made. Mom took like some of the leftovers and then she made some shrimp and she's gonna make like little shrimp tacos with that and it looks so delicious. So now we've got our onions nice and soft. I'm gonna add in here some garlic and I'm just gonna use garlic powder, a little bit of smoked paprika, some stone ground mustard, and then some salt and pepper. Now all we have to do is add our cabbage right on top. We're gonna give it like a good toss to make sure it's nice and coated and all of that yummy flavor. And then we're just gonna let this saute for the next like 10 to 15 minutes. And then it'll be done. We'll top it with our bacon. I feel like this is gonna be so delicious. First of all, this cabbage it just looks incredible. Do you smell this? I like, want to look at it. Let's uh, everybody have a little peek here. It is so tender and sauteed and just like, mm. oh wow. It's amazing. Whenever we go eat Japanese, one of my favorite things, some Japanese restaurants will give you like sauteed cabbage. Yeah. I've forgotten all about that because mm -hmm. the one here. Doesn't do it. They don't. But that was always one of my favorite oh, things. Drizzle some shrimp sauce on top of that. Yeah. It's delicious. You know what I just remember now? What? Remember at, um, when we would go to Saki? Yes. And they had cabbage chicken. Y'all, it's, it's like one of my favorite things. Cabbage chicken with teriyaki on but it. But this is more of like a southern style dish. And that ground mustard in here is going to give it so much flavor. Yeah. There's ground mustard, onion, garlic, smoked paprika. Mm. You're going to love this. Yeah, we were getting totally off base there. Yeah, we were. <laughs> Bring, bring us back bring it in. Back to the style. So since this is done, I'm just gonna top it with our bacon. I'll give it a little toss, and then that's it. We can eat. You know, I just had a thought of. And tell me if this is crazy, because I don't really eat this kind of food. Okay. Okay. Um, if you had like a hot dog or bratwurst, would this be like a good topping or no? Mmm. So you're kind of on track there, as if. This would be sauerkraut. Right. But I don't think there's enough. No. no. <laughs> okay. Kielbasa. Yeah. Like the Polish sausage, I think. Oh, and I have this as a side. Yeah, just get so just good. some kielbasa and then have this with it. Yeah. It smells really good. It does. Let's... Oh my gosh. Taste that's... testers. Mmm. <laughs> mm, I love this. You put spicy brown mustard in it? No. Well, it's stone ground mustard. But see how oh, we were talking? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mom and I were just talking about this, how cabbage becomes spicy when you cook it. Mm -hmm. It's a little spicy now. But there's nothing spicy in there, really. No, the mustard's good, though. Yeah. I like I, that. I wasn't expecting it. I didn't know you put mustard in it. No. It's so good. The bacon's giving a nice little smoky touch. Yeah. Good. So it reminds you of a Reuben. It kind of does, actually. <laughs> See? <laughs> 
same taste buds. Y'all do. These two love the same foods. Mm -hmm. Like, it is crazy. That's because we're smart. But Bungie's idea to eat this with, um, you said a kielbasa sausage? Wow. Yeah, oh, yeah, perfect yourself. pairing. Mm -hmm. I'm really good. talking about an easy dinner. With the mustard in there, too, and the kielbasa, that'd be good. Yep. It's like all-inclusive. <laughs> <laughs> I got your bases covered here. Okay, this kitchen is a mess. I have cooked until my heart is content. These recipes were so delicious. I hope you guys will try them. I'll have them linked down below for you. Don't forget to check out your local grocery store for Smithfield. I'd love for you guys to subscribe if you're new. Give this one a thumbs up, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, y'all.